Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're back here in Forza Motorsport 7 today, and we're just gonna be jumping into an open drift hopper for a little bit and doing some practice runs in this new Mazda RX-3 build I've been do are working on lately. I've been trying to drift rotaries a lot more because they have a very different feel to them. You have to be a lot more precise with where you throw the car and the amount of throttle you're giving it. Definitely not as forgiving. I just wanted to jump into the upgrade menu before we go in so you guys can see the specs on it and check the power levels out. We are 472 horsepower. It's only a 2100 pound car, so that's actually a pretty respectable amount of power, honestly, in this thing. 57% front weight distribution, which is a little bit nose heavy, but the car actually feels pretty good. I do like it. I only have 225 tires in the rear. I believe it's the same in front. Let me actually double check real quick because I actually can't remember for sure. Oh, 205 front, 225 rear, and I am on sport tires. So this is a lot different build than what I normally do. This is more like a true grassroots JDM style car almost, except I did do an engine swap for a 13B in this thing. These th rotaries sound decent here in motorsport up till you get to a certain RPM, and then they just kind of really sound fake and artificial. As you can see, we are on Rio full circuit for this, so there might actually be a decent amount of this track. I can't even drift in this car because it is lower power. It's not really built for this kind of track layout. And Rio full circuit is just a challenging circuit anyway, so I'm sure I'm gonna make plenty of mistakes through this. I did run a few practice laps beforehand in uh, RX-7 just to get a feel for drifting on the full circuit here at Rio again because it has been an extremely long time since I've been on this full circuit. There actually is a decent amount of people in this lobby, but a lot of them either aren't active or as you can see, you get spread so far apart here in Rio full circuit that it gets really hard to catch up with people to be able to do any tandeming. Ooh. I was getting used to my RX-7's gearing. This thing has got a little less power and it feels like it's got more grip, which is really strange considering it's only got a 225 rear and a 205 on the front. It does feel extremely grippy though. Yeah, but I was gonna say, there's no way I'm getting far enough away from that wall. And you can really see I do have a softer suspension set up in this car too, which probably is aiding with how it's wanting to grip up on me. Definitely takes a few laps to get the hang of this car after you haven't drove it for a little bit with how it's built, but once you do, it's an extremely fun car to drift. I really want to get some third person shots for you guys because it definitely gets a little boring. I can understand watching somebody play in first person. It really messes with me though. I have a I have such a hard time going back and forth between camera angles drifting like this. This is like the hardest corner on this circuit to get right, right here, I swear it is. Still came in a little too shallow. I do have to say, I've been having fun doing some laps here on the Rio Full Circuit. I can't even remember the last time I actually drifted at Rio Full Circuit was.
Whoa. That's one of the real downsides about having a suspension set up as soft as what I have in this thing on a track like this is it's got some really rough sections and it'll just kind of toss the car this light around wherever it wants it to go. Ooh, real close to a wall tap there. Just really chucking it into that section. I'm not so much worried about sticking to the actual line to be able to get points. I really want to throw it over those curves a little bit and try to get the nose as close as I can to the tire walls. So a lot of what makes Rio so fun is there's just a lot of stuff that adds to the difficulty and you can kind of play around with lines with to try to work on proximity and that type of thing. Nice little jump drift. Can I hold it though? A little too much speed. You gotta hit that so perfectly to get a nice jump drift out of it and not just keep sliding straight into the wall at the end. Too much throttle and it pulled the nose of the car into the wall. That's kind of what I mean though about having to get used to this car is it does grip up so much the car will just kind of launch sometimes on you and put you straight in the wall if you're not really used to the way the car reacts to throttle. Definitely very different than the RX-7 I was driving here before. That car just kind of you just floor it and forget it. It's going to slide wherever it's going to slide. It's just really stable, but not much grip. Oh, I'm not even sure what happened there. It feels like the rear end kind of like lifted up as I was getting on the gas, and that was just all she wrote. Alright, so since I don't know how much of the footage is actually going to be messed up and I'm going to have to edit out, my Elgato kind of screwed up on me and I was starting to get errors in the frame. Luckily I was getting ready to check to see how long I'd been recording for, so I caught it I think pretty soon after it started. But anyways, just in case it, the video seems jumbled and it seems like I'm missing footage, I probably am and I just wanted to let you guys know why. I was stupid and I plugged in my laptop to the charger, but I did not make sure the cord was plugged all the way into the back of the power brick for the charger, so it wasn't actually plugged in. I just thought it was the whole time, so my battery started to die and then it goes into like energy saver mode, so it killed my performance. And I just started dropping frames like crazy. That was actually a pretty clean transition into the tunnel. Can I get some fourth gear action in there? Okay, let's try not to just spin wildly out of control under the wall for no reason this time. Ooh. I think I'm initiating way too early in this car. It was okay with my RX-7 with 500 and some odd horsepower, but... This thing just does not want to do it where I'm trying to initiate into that at. Oh, fourth gear was the wrong choice. Fourth gear was definitely the wrong choice. You can kind of see what I was saying about this track though, like 
even though there's a decent little group of people in this lobby, I have like literally seen nobody. I'm starting to get myself all mixed up trying to talk and drift at the same time and being worried about whether my Elgato is actually recording correctly again or if it's still dropping frames. Finally got around there cleanly in this car. That's normally like the easiest part for me to do too, but I just come screwing it up every single time in this thing. I think I see a Ford Model T up ahead of us. Yeah, that's definitely a Ford. Or not Model T, but would it be a 30, 1930 Coupe or 32? That'd be a 30, I believe. Are we gonna get some tandems in with this Model T? One of the worst corners to try to tandem on to. Oh no, I went too wide. As soon as I came over the little crest, it threw me out to the outside and into the wall. Okay, this is doable. I was not expecting this to happen today. That's the first time I've ever got to tandem with a Model T. That was so cool. I can't believe that actually worked somehow. Oh no, Model T spun. That's it. That was a good run into that corner too and I just went and completely screwed it up. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I wish I could have got more tandeming in there, but I'm not gonna really complain because that was really cool tandeming with an old model or an old Ford. Definitely a first for me. I've never even seen one of those in the drift lobby before, I don't think. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy the video today, don't forget to hit that like button down below, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.